Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I want to talk to you guys about using returns in Ruby methods. So in the last tutorial, we talked a lot about writing methods. We looked at how we could give methods some information through parameters. In this tutorial, I want to talk to you guys about how methods can give us information back. So when I call a method inside of my program, that method will go off, it'll execute all its code but then it can actually give us a piece of information or in some cases, multiple pieces of information back. And that can be really useful. So for the purposes of this tutorial, I want to show you guys how we can create a cube function. So in math, when you cube a number, you essentially take it to the third power. So if I was going to cube two, it'd be like two raised to the third power. So essentially it would just be two times two times two, right? So why don't we write a little method that's going to do that for us. So this method will cube a number and this is going to be pretty interesting. So down here, I'm just going to say def and we'll say cube and we want to pass in one number. So I'm just going to specify that they need to pass in a num and then down here, we're going to say end. What's cool about these methods is they can actually give us information back. So if I was going to cube the number, it would basically just be num times num times num, right? So that's essentially like all we would need to do to cube the number. But what's cool is when I call this cube function and I give it a number, so like I give it a two, if I was to print this out, so if I said puts cube two, this is actually gonna print out num times num times num. So it's actually gonna print out this answer over here. So let's take a look. You'll see here we're printing out eight. If I was to pass in like three over here, now we should get 27. So basically what's happening is we're calling this cube method and this cube method is giving us a value back. So when I call this, this is actually like ends up representing a value. It ends up representing the value that was given back to it. And if you want to give a value back, all you have to do is basically just specify it right here. So that's a really cool way that we can use these methods to get information back. But sometimes when you're working in these programs, it might not be super clear what value you want to return. So for example, I have num times num times num here, but if I put a four down here right below this, or even if I put like a string or whatever, let's put a five, you'll notice that now instead of returning num times num times num, this is actually going to return five. And that's because five is the last line inside of this method. It's basically like the last returnable piece of information that's inside of this method. So in situations like this, you can actually use what's called the return work keyword. So I can say return right before here. And even though there's a value after this, you'll see that this is going to return num times num times num anyway. So we're returning 27. And actually here's the interesting part is any code that goes before this return keyword or that goes after this return keyword isn't going to get executed. So if I put a puts down here and I print it out, hello, when I run my program, you'll notice that it doesn't print out hello, like nothing is getting printed out. Basically what's happening is when we use this return keyword, that's going to signal to Ruby that we're done with the method. So when Ruby sees this return keyword, it's basically going to jump and break out of the method and move on to the next line of code. So essentially when you're using the return keyword, nothing after it is going to get executed. And that's just a little tip. So in addition to returning just normal numbers, like we did over here, we can also return multiple pieces of information and keep in mind, you can return any data type. It doesn't have to be like a number. Uh, it could be a string, it could be a Boolean, it could be anything. If I wanted though, I could return multiple numbers. So for example, I could return num times num times num. And then if I put a comma here, I could return another value. So I could return like 70. And now when I run my program, in addition to returning 27, you'll see that it's also returning 70. So I'm getting two pieces of information. And this is basically just returning like an array. So I could access each individual value that got returned by its index. So if I said Q3 square brackets one, that's just going to give me 70. Now you want to be careful when re you're returning multiple values, just because if you're returning like five or six different values, it can get a little bit confusing, especially for, you know, the code that's actually calling these functions. But for the most part, that can actually be pretty useful. So that's the basics of using that return keyword and also just returning values in general. This can be a super powerful way to, to make your methods a lot better.
Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.